Hare Krishna, we continue reading from Nectar of Devotion. We are on chapter one, reading the characteristics of pure devotional service. We are on the second characteristic, that it's most auspicious. So continuing to read, for example, a Krishna conscious boy, even if he's not very well educated by the university standard, can immediately give up all illicit sex life, gambling, meat eating and intoxication. Whereas those who are not in Krishna consciousness, although very highly educated, are often drunkards, meat eaters, sex mongers, and gamblers. These are practical proofs of how a Krishna conscious person becomes highly developed in good qualities. Whereas a person who is not in Krishna consciousness cannot do so. We experience that even a young boy in Krishna consciousness is unattached to cinemas, nightclubs, naked dance shows, restaurants, liquor shops, etc. He becomes completely freed. He saves his valuable time from being extravagantly spent in the way of smoking, drinking, attending the theater and dancing. So the devotee, Prabhupada is trying to tell us that the devotee if we see his activities, he is uh, he does not engage in sinful activities. It's easy for him to give up sinful activities. Why? Because he is experiencing greater bliss in devotional service. He's experiencing the greater joy. One who is not in Krishna consciousness usually cannot sit silently even for half an hour. The yoga system teaches that if you become silent, you will realize that you are God. The system may be all right for materialistic persons, but how long will they be able to keep themselves silent? Artificially, they may sit down for so-called meditation, but immediately after the yogic performance, they will engage themselves again in such activities as illicit sex life, gambling, meat eating, and many other nonsensical things. So it seems there is some sort of practice that where people say, oh, you sit down quietly and you will realize that you are God. But the point to note is how long can we sit down quietly? How long can we be in that position? We have to change. We are going to speak or we are going to eat. We are going to do something. And then when we do that something, then because the consciousness is not Krishna conscious, we engage in sinful activity. But a Krishna conscious person gradually elevates himself without endeavoring for this so-called silent meditation. Simply because he's engaged in Krishna consciousness, he automatically gives up all this nonsense and develops a high character. So by Krishna consciousness, by engaging in Krishna consciousness, it's easy for the devotee to give up sinful activities. One develops the highest character by becoming a pure devotee of Krishna. The conclusion is that no one can truly have any good qualities if he's lacking Krishna consciousness. So we may say that this person has this great quality, this person has this great quality. Yeah, it's true, but nectar of devotion Prabhupada is saying that the, if we become Krishna conscious we can develop the highest the best qualities and if we are not Krishna conscious then we truly cannot have any good qualities so does it mean that we say okay I'm becoming Krishna conscious so then I can be angry I can be proud no that we have to cultivate we have to be aware of our, uh, how are we behaving? You know, we say, oh, we are, we are practicing Krishna consciousness. So then that gives me a right that I can behave in any way. No, we have to, in fact, be more careful of how we are, uh, how are we acting? Are we acting out of envy or anger or pride? So we have to develop these good qualities. Any questions till, till what we read? No? 
before we move on to the next quality characteristic. No, then reading on happiness in Krishna consciousness. Srila Rupa Goswami has analyzed the different sources of happiness. He has divided happiness into three categories, which are one, happiness derived from material enjoyment. Two, happiness derived from identifying oneself with the Supreme Brahman. And three, happiness derived from Krishna consciousness. <coughs> happiness, we all want happiness. We are all seeking happiness. Rupa Goswami is saying there are three sources of happiness. One, happiness we get in this material world. When we engage in material enjoyment, we want to have some sense gratification and we get happiness. We do, otherwise we wouldn't be doing, uh, engaging in them. Then a higher happiness than that is understanding I am Brahman. And what happens is when one understands one Brahman, what the mistake we do is we think we are the Supreme Brahman. We we start thinking that I am I am the Supreme Brahman. But okay, there is happiness there also. Of course, in the Brahman platform, there is much higher happiness than the happiness he found here in the material world. Material world, we are finding happiness by enjoying the senses, by you know, we say, oh, I'm enjoying. So there is much more happiness in the Brahman. And even higher than the happiness of the Brahman is happiness in Krishna consciousness. In the Tantra, Tantra Shastra, Lord Shiva speaks to his wife Sati in this way. My dear wife, a person who has surrendered himself at the lotus feet of Govinda and who has thus developed pure Krishna consciousness can be very easily awarded all the perfections desired by the impersonalist. And beyond this, he can enjoy the happiness achieved by the pure devotees. So Lord Shiva is speaking to his wife Sati. He's telling her, and this is recorded in the Tantra Shastra. He's saying that a pure devotee of the Lord who has completely surrendered himself to the lotus feet of the Lord, who has revived his Krishna consciousness, he, he can get all the perfections. He can get liberation as is desired by the impersonalist. And he experiences, he ex enjoys a happiness which is experienced by the pure devotees which is so it goes to show that the happiness or the enjoyment on the brahman platform is not the ultimate happiness there is a greater happiness than the than the brahman platform and that happiness is experienced by the pure devotee who is engaged in pure devotional service so when we are saying Brahman platform means liberation. So when one is liberated, of course there is happiness. But there is a greater happiness uh, when one engages in devotional service. So does it mean that devotional service is on the material platform? No. Pure devotional service begins from the liberated platform. Liberation is not the goal. The, the journey is not yet finished. It's a great platform, yes. But from there, we have to go on further. To go further, once we understand, I'm not this body, I'm the soul. Oh, really, I'm the soul. So then, now what do I have to do if I'm the soul? Where do I go from here? What are my activities as the soul? And then engaging in devotional service. Those activities are a source of the greatest joy. Those are the eternal activities of the soul, devotional service. So we'll stop here for today. If there are no questions or comments. Shla Prabhupada ki Gaur Bhakta Vinde ki Hare Krishna.